Over in the pages of Marvel Comics, the X-Men have been taking some big swings during their recent Fall of X initiative. This latest tale is also quite fascinating as Kurt, Nightcrawler, is looking ahead over to New York City to sling alongside Peter Parker as the uncanny Spider-Man. Kurt has seemingly been running away from some of his problems and with the X-Men's recent attack over from Orcus, it looks like Kurt is going to be busier than ever operating from some of the shadows alongside Spider-Man. My name is Arako Braddock and today let's go ahead and see if the creative team of Cy Spurrier and Lee Garbett can tell an interesting story with an insane premise over an Uncanny Spider-Man issue one. Before we get deeper into the video, I want to encourage you to hit the like button over on this video and subscribe to the channel in order to support our content. The Nightcrawling Wallcrawler. On the darkest of days, he is the spark in the shadows. After the devastating events of the Hellfire Gala, Kurt Wagner is on the run and having the time of his life swashbuckling about New York City in disguise, the uncanny wall crawler sets aside his mutant angst and dedicates himself to the hero's life. Saving civilians, hanging with fellow night crawlers, battling baddies, and hunting down the best pizza on the planet. But he can't ignore the mutant plight forever. Cy Spurrier and Lee Garbett launch a joyful, sexy series that will shake Nightcrawler to his foundations and have a hell of a good time doing it. Uncanny Spider-Man number one is written by Cy Spurrier, featuring art over from Lee Garbett. We have colors from Matt Miller, letters from VCs Joe Caramagna, design from Tom Muller and Jay Bowen. And we also have a cover coming in directly over from Tony Daniel and Sonia Oback. Really like this pose that Nightcrawler is capturing as the Uncanny Spider-Man over to our cover on Uncanny Spider-Man issue one. I want to extend a quick thank you over to Adventures in Poor Taste and show off some of the incredible artwork over in this comic book series from Lee Garbett. Really think that Lee Garbett does a wonderful job recalling some of Marvel's house style, but in really, really interesting ways here. When we get the introduction of Kurt as the uncanny Spider-Man, I really think that both Spurrier and Garbett do a great job building to this moment as we have some goons with Shocker technology working together to fight off a mysterious character who is slowly revealed to be the uncanny Spider-Man here. Really like how Lee Garbett captures Nightcrawler showing up with a Banff interrupting the meeting between some of these goons here. I was also really fascinated with how Cy Spurrier was able to integrate some of the elements of Orcus into this status quo by having these Stark Sentinels that Tony Stark accidentally helped devise over in the Marvel Universe show up to spoil the fun in the issue. Also think that Lee Garbett had some really fantastic page layouts across this series. This page that we have up on the screen is a perfect example with some interestingly shaped panels that have a white background giving way to a sort of negative space that shows off this background of the page really beautifully here. And I thought we also got a great reaction scene over from the uncanny Spider-Man with him stating, you need to practice your parking pal. It was really interesting to see Kurt try and imitate Peter Parker in some of these elements. Author Cy Spurrier has been working with Nightcrawler for an incredibly long time across several different series over during the Krakoa era of X-Men comic books like Way of X and Legion of X. So I really found it cathartic when Peter Parker and Kurt got a few moments to catch up on their life and also to see Kurt talk about some of the recent developments that he's had to suffer during the Krakoa era especially recounting uh, some of the really harrowing scenarios that we experienced in some of the final issues of Legion of X as well as Sons of X. Really like the fact that Kurt's Astral Cutlass makes its way back over to this series as it really opened up some fascinating story ideas in the Sons of X Before the Fall tie-in over from Marvel Comics. Also, just another great use of negative space when artist Lee Garbett gets to recount some of the harrowing moments over in Legion of X as well here. 
Later on in the comic book series, we also get to see Cy Spurrier really invert some of the status quos for existing Spider-Man characters. I'm so excited that Spurrier was able to utilize several different Spider-Man rogues over for this issue, and I'm really fascinated to see how this series is plotted and paced in upcoming issues with so many lingering threats just bubbling beneath the surface over in this issue here. Really, really enjoyed seeing how Cy Spurrier injected a power upgrade to several of Spider-Man's key rogues. Also, I really like how so many X-Men comics are devoted to showing off the base of Orcus. Really found that this issue was no exception, but this one also managed to include some interesting nods over to the Spider-Man property when they were building and establishing the upcoming threat with Orcus. Another element of this comic book that really has me intrigued is all the setup loaded in this issue for the X-Men Blue Origins issue coming up very, very soon. I don't want to spoil how Spurrier integrates some of these plot threads over in the issue, but some of the teases as to what's coming next I think is really enthralling over in the comic book series. I really do think that Spurrier is able to get the characterization for Kurt just right. And I'm also curious to see Kurt talk a little bit more about how he feels with the status quo of Krakoa. One really interesting element of this comic book that I hope is explored over in future issues is how Kurt decided to leave the X-Men even before the Hellfire Gala happened. So at the end of the day here, I really think that the Uncanny Spider-Man debut was a ton of fun over from Marvel Comics. The way that this creative team utilized some traditional Spider-Man rogues in interesting ways here and managed to take in some of the X-Men continuity and meld it over with Spider-Man was really engrossing in this series. I've been really wanting Marvel to combine the comic book universes of Spider-Man and the X-Men, and I really do think that this is a more natural fit than you might realize. While I do anticipate that this storyline and status quo is going to be temporary for Nightcrawler and the Marvel Universe, I still do think there is a ton of fun to be had here. And I also got an absolute blast out of seeing how Cy Spurrier operates with existing Spider-Man continuity. Would love to see him have a main run on the core Spider-Man series to see how he utilizes some of these scenarios. I also found some of the wisecracking from Kurt as Nightcrawler to be pretty engrossing over in this issue. It was pretty interesting to see what kind of lines he would come up with and how he sort of interacts with other characters over in the Marvel Universe. I also really like how some of the plainclothes individuals identify Nightcrawler as this sort of like hell dimension possessed uh, Spider-Man character. I thought it was really, really interesting to see your just average human being react to the uncanny Spider-Man as well. I want to know from you, did this status quo work for you? What were some of your thoughts over on this debut issue of Uncanny Spider-Man? Let me know down in the comments below. Thank you so much for coming to check out our debut review over for this new chapter in the X-Men. We'll be back to focus in on what Cy Spurrier has up for Nightcrawler next and to focus in on some subsequent issues of Uncanny Spider-Man. Thanks so much for coming to check out our video, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.